Jesus, when you gonna wake up? When you gonna wake up and calm this rage and see? Jesus, when you gonna wake up? When you gonna wake up? How can you sleep when we're in need? Just one word from the Maker, and all the ways be still. Just one touch from the Healer. So Jesus, when you gonna wake up, when you gonna wake up and calm this raging sea? Jesus, when you gonna wake up, when you gonna wake up, how can you sleep? Just one word from the Maker, and all the waves will be made still. Just one touch from the Healer, and all will be made well. Just one word from the Maker, and all the waves will be made still. Just one touch from. Gracious God, open our ears to receive your word, open our minds to learn your wisdom, and open our hearts to embrace your call upon us in Jesus Christ today. Amen. A reading from the book of Job, chapter 28, verses 20 through 27. Where then does wisdom come from? Where is the place of understanding? It is hidden from the eyes of all living and concealed from the birds of the air. God understands the way to it and he knows its place for he looks to the ends of the earth and sees everything under the heavens. When he gave to the wind its weight and apportioned out the waters by measure, when he made a decree for the rain and a way for the thunderbolt, then he saw it and declared it. He established it and searched it out. Here ends that reading. And a second reading for you today from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 8, verses 22 through 25. One day he got into a boat with his disciples, and he said to them, Let us go across to the other side of the lake. So they put out, and while they were sailing, he, Jesus, fell asleep. A gale swept down on the lake, and the boat was filling with water, and they were in danger. 
They went to him and woke him up shouting, Master, Master, we are perishing. And he woke up and rebuked the wind and the raging waves. They ceased and there was a calm. He said to them, Where is your faith? They were afraid and amazed and said to one another, Who then is this that he commands even the winds and the water? And they obey him. It was a dark and stormy night. Well, it really was. It was also stiflingly hot and humid. The overhead fan was whirring cool breeze through the mosquito net over my bed, and it offered a little bit of relief until the electricity went out. I was secure in a building that had sturdy cinder block walls, but as Retina shocking lightning sundered the sky and ear splitting thunder followed a few minutes later, well, a few seconds later, I was terrified. I grew up in the Indiana Storm Belt where tornadoes were seasonal events, and I have strong memories of the days when the storm sirens wailed and my mother hustled us to the basement hidey hole where we waited until the radio announced the all clear like our ancestors for millennia, who made sense of storm unpredictability by telling stories of temperamental gods, my mom softened my fright, telling me that the thunder was the sound of angels in heaven bowling. <laughs> Maybe you were also told a story like that. But on that dark and stormy night I experienced some 20 years ago, I was in Bangladesh halfway around the world from my parents. I cowered in a corner away from the room's large window, and the stories I told myself only amplified my terror. This is it, the night I would finally get zapped by lightning. Or this is it, God's confirmation of my Peace Corps failures. For weeks I'd been swamped by indecision, should I flee or stick out my tenure, in the toughest job you ever loved. But after six months, I wasn't sure I was tough or loving enough for this posting. And the storm mirrored the chaos of my the inner conflict surging inside me. Looking back, I see how that frightful storm also brought the grace of revelation. Each lightning flash illuminated my profound distrust of God. Each thunderclap echoed my soul-splitting anxiety that I'd been trying to hide, especially from myself. Then, as the rain's torrent blurred the margins of heaven and earth, a friend came and helped me face my choices. Your life is out of control, she said to me. You can choose to go home or you can choose to stay. But either way, you must learn to trust God when you are not in control. My friend's insight was not a rebuke, but an invitation to grow in faith. And it's like Jesus' question to his disciples on that boat after the storm on the Sea of Galilee. Where is your faith? Jesus asks. He is inviting them and us to perceive more clearly our trust in God, and, our, and the freedom that God gives us to make choices that matter. Sometimes this story has been taught as a reminder to pray in difficult situations. God may appear to be asleep, but if we call, God will rescue us, whatever storm life brings us. Now there is comfort in this metaphorical interpretation of life's storms. But if we put the storm, the actual storm, at the forefront, not merely as metaphor, but as an actual meteorological phenomenon of planet Earth, what about that? What if the storm is more than just a background for Jesus' miracle in this story? What if the storm testifies to the hidden wisdom of God's ongoing creativity? God's wisdom is not a fixed entity that humans can seize or hold. Wisdom is the capacity to skillfully discern and choose the best response in any given situation. And so God's wisdom is revealed in the dynamism of creation, 
its processes, its balances, and its tensions. Job pictures all of this, pictures God weighing the wind, portioning out the waters, regulating the rain and the thunderbolt, allowing storms, yet limiting their impact. Storms bear witness to the dynamic relationships between the soil and air and the sky and the water of Earth's ecosystem. They arise when a rapid change is in the air, literally, when warm air rises and cold air sinks. More often than not, storms are beneficial to us. They refresh and they renew the Earth. They bring needed rainfall and cool the air, and they cleanse the air from pollutants. And storm winds prune plants and clear ground for new growth. Lightning's electricity frees up nitrogen atoms to fertilize vegetation. But we have seen too many catastrophes in the wake of storms. Lightning can start wildfires, and 2020's wildfires were among the worst ever. 2020's hurricane season was the most active on record, and in the aftermath and recovery, we lament the resulting loss of life and livelihood of storms around the world. In Bangladesh, my storm panic was intensified by my awareness of the devastation that that nation's people have historically suffered in some of Earth's most extreme storms. I imagine countless Bangladeshis riding out the storm sheltered only by rickety shacks. Now, Bangladesh has one of the Earth's most dense and most impoverished human populations who reside largely on lowland floodplains. And so as the rising seas of our times augment the energy of cyclones that come into this location, traditionally inhabited land disappears and refugees from rural areas flood already overburdened cities. In the global climate crisis, the people of Bangladesh are on the front lines. And I fear for the people who claimed a portion of my heart when I lived among them, even as I am encouraged by their storm wisdom. Bangladesh is a resilient country, notes Bangladeshi University Dean Omar Rahman in a Scientific American series on climate change. We have shown the world that we can adapt we can confront things that we are not just passive victims of disasters. Storms invite us to practice resilient faith in the midst of Earth's rapidly changing conditions. And Jesus exemplifies this kind of faith, whether he is at rest in the storm or he is commanding the storm to calm with assertive authority. Beyond trusting in Jesus to rescue us when we are in trouble, Jesus wants his disciples to learn his kind of faith, the faith that Jesus himself has in God, a foundational confidence about, uh, in a God who cares about what is happening in our world right now. The God in whom Jesus trusts is not a capricious storm God punishing or toying with humanity. That's the Greek god Zeus, not the god we know in Jesus Christ. Jesus trusts that God is gracious and compassionate, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love, as the Bible testifies so many times. And so Jesus can be at peace with the storm on the Sea of Galilee because he is trusting that it is a phenomenon of God's creative wisdom. The conditions of planet Earth and the conditions of our lives change rapidly. Storms come reminding us that we are not in control. And we may not choose the storm, but we do get to choose how we will respond to it. And our choices matter to God and to planet Earth. When a violent storm strikes and it's hard to think clearly, there is a third choice beyond fight or flight. Stop, take a deep breath, and return your awareness to God. Who then is this 
that he commands even the winds and the water, and they obey him. He is the God who is present to you, for you, and within you. The God who gives you the wisdom you need, who shows you the wisdom you already have, valuing and empowering your participation in the ongoing creation. So, let us now turn once more to our God in prayer. Holy One, Holy Three, give us the confidence of Jesus Christ in the storm, that we may choose into the future, acting with compassion and care for all of our neighbors and all our relations on planet Earth. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, 